What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Health Talk Radio. I am sitting here with my beautiful co-host, Paul Burgess, and we have got a great episode. It's a little misleading. The title of this episode is called, Why It's Not Your Choice. Ooh, right? What, though, is not their choice, Paul? None of it. None of it is their choice. Trust None me, when you I hear mean, this, talking about, yeah, you, right, when you hear this, you realize actually, you know, it's not misleading at all, but um, it's a it's a fascinating subject because it it relates to something called behavioral medicine, mm -hmm. and it's super important for people to understand the root causes of their health issues. Yeah, yep. And there are two things that people have to work out. I, firstly. Some root causes are pathogens, right? So infections, viruses, bacteria, mold, that kind of thing. Things that you have accumulated, if you like. Other root causes are setting behaviors. Mm -hmm. And it's that one that we're going to talk about today. At some point, we'll talk about the others. But that's yeah, when you're talking that... about pathogens, when, you, when you're talking about pathogens, are, are these built up pathogens over like decades, years, months? Like what, what are we talking about? And I know we'll we'll go we'll go deeper on that, but all the above, you know, it can be something. You I mean, do we all have them? Are they are they? Can we avoid them? Is there anything we can do to avoid them? Uh, okay, so yes, but the way the world is right now, we are you know the world's set up to to cause us a lot of illness and, and problems. Yeah, and you know, pollution, chemical toxicity. You know, the thing they spray your sofa with or, you know, the, the, the new car smell that you got, that's all from toxicity and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. mold, the food quality, you know, all of that stuff accumulates in us over time. Mm -hmm. So what can you do? Well, you can avoid exposure to it as much as possible. But more importantly, you've got to remove what's in there. And so once you've got the levels down to a, a, a reasonable amount, that allows your, your own detoxification system to continue to keep them lower because you've taken the mass, the majority of the load away. Got it. So Got once it. you can get it down, then right. you can normally be okay for a little while. And then every so often just check and, and redo a little de uh, detoxification um, uh, protocol. But, but yeah, you, uh, avoiding it is the best way. So yeah. you know, we'll do a, we'll, we have, we have to do a whole podcast on that. You know, give people some 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 tools, some supplements, and some things, some protocols, and things to follow, um, so that they can they can get healthy. But like you said, this, the, what we're going to talk about today is the real deal. Like this is like the the underlying like what everybody needs to focus first. Everybody wants to train their ass off. Everybody wants you know a, a low calorie or a diet. They think you know I, I'm going to do it this time. All I got to do is train my ass off and eat chicken and broccoli. When the truth is, is that there's actually something else going on which is what we're going to talk about today right yeah um you know you can do the chicken and broccoli um and that's all very lovely but you're dealing with the thin end of the wedge you know mm. nutrition when when it's manipulative in other words if you're if you're following a diet to get an outcome that is the very thin end of the wedge you know how yeah. many eggs you should have for breakfast isn't gonna isn't gonna fix you. Egg whites, should I leave the yolks out, grain free toast? Like Forget I about that. Go. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Right. Focus on the thick end of the wedge, which is right. why am I doing these things? What has accumulated in me? How have I got to change things going forward? That kind of stuff. Yep. The yep. The, the, the the little thing about the food, honestly, it's not that it's not where I focus, but everyone wants to focus on that because right. the books say you should and it's controllable. Right. The books, me, the fitness gurus, everybody tells you, you know, just cut your calories. Just just cut your calories. That's it. Less calories in, more calories out, and you're going to be great, right? And and you did a post about that this week. I think you, you put something uh, on the social media about, about that. And, and uh, you were reading a book. And, and we'll cover some of that today because um, there is definitely validity to the amount of calories you eat and your energy expenditure right you know if you right. eat ten thousand calories a day you are going to put weight on right there's not right. a way around it but um it's not quite as cut and dried as people would like to make you think right, um, right. because it depends on a lot of factors but we, we, we'll, we'll talk about that on uh, on a different one i'm sure yeah i think we do we do a podcast dedicated to calories in calories out and we bust the myths that surround 
Like I, I get it, right? There's there's certainly some some validation to it, but I think the model is broken. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but we don't yeah. even. Yeah, we'll 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 discuss on a. You know, yeah. we've got um an episode lined up. The last diet you'll ever next, need. Oh yeah, next week. So next week, you guys, for those of you that are listening right now, next week it's called your last diet. I like these like these like super secret coder titles that we're using. <laughs> Your last diet, dun, 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 dun. clickbait. I think it's called right. So, yeah, um, yep. We, but the the, the so, but, but going back to today, we want to talk about um, why it's not your choice, and yeah, it, it, it's important for people to realise. Um, and I'm going to start by talking about cholesterol, um, because people know what cholesterol is, right? It's a fat that your body has to produce. All of your cells are made from cholesterol. You produce your hormones from it. It's protective. There's a whole lot of things about it good and bad yeah really quickly before you dig into this can i just bust one myth can we just bust the people that are not eating yolks because they think it it increases your cholesterol and it's bad for you what do you say to those people because i think that's really outdated advice isn't it yeah dietary cholesterol doesn't increase your cholesterol levels it, it's, it's as simple as that um cholesterol is a protective mechanism and so it will go up when you have something going on that's creating inflammation in your system. Mm -hmm. And if you have multiple things creating inflammation, it will go higher. And those things can be things like viruses, um, mold, toxicity, heavy metals, pathogens, bacteria, um, stress, mm -hmm. blood glucose dysregulation, all sorts of things. This is one of the reasons why if people take statins, so statin users have a higher all-cause mortality rate, which is a death rate, than non-statin users. Because cholesterol is a, is a gauge, if you like, as to underlying problems. And so when the gauge is going up, we know that something underneath is causing an issue. But if we artificially, by taking statins, push this down, our numbers are great. Oh, look, you haven't got high cholesterol anymore. Mm -hmm. But what was driving it up is still there. This so will it's kill not, you. It's not the egg yolk. But it's not the egg yolk. It's not, ain't the egg yolk that's driving it up. <laughs> right? Okay. Good. We've busted it. Eat the yolk. Eat the yolk. So Eat if you it. like yolks, right? But right. but here's the thing, right? It, it's really important to understand that. And when cholesterol is artificially dropped, the, the underlying root cause problems are still going on. And this stuff will kill you because you haven't addressed it. You've just masked it. And now you're pretending everything's fine. Right. Well, that will come back and bite you in the ass. So, so when we're, when we're talking about it's not your choice, are we talking about like for the people that are overweight, right? It's, it's not your choice. Are we talking about the people who are stressed out? It's not your choice. Like when we say it's not your choice, what exactly for the sake of, of this podcast, what are we going to refer to? Right. Every decision you're making, uh -huh. it has been... Manipulated, manipulated yeah within you yeah. to yep. make that decision you have yeah. not made that from free will right what are you watching who are you listening to what are you reading pop culture instagram social media your mother your brother your cousin your environments right they shape you yeah absolutely so so let's 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 take the take the the, the simple route when it comes to health right and we talk about cholesterol right. like you said so i'm working on my posture can you tell yeah but yeah. you're not doing so well, but it's fine. You know, Rome, Rome wasn't built in a day. So, so let's take someone has a blood test, cholesterol is elevated. Why is it elevated? Well, we spoke just now about all these different reasons, but one I'm going to pick on is blood glucose regulation. Mm -hmm. So your blood glucose is elevated. Your And there's a few markers when we come to blood glucose, right? So it's glucose, fasted insulin, C-peptide, HbA1c, fructosamine. There's a few different ones, right? And they all give us the pattern. You know, is it acute? Is it long-term? What's been going on? But if we've got glucose dysregulation and it's elevated, it will push up uh, cholesterol. Let's just take that as a fact. So what is the root cause of the increased cholesterol? Glucose. No. Right? The root cause is why is the glucose elevated? So we go back to the diet. Right. Mm -hmm. And we look at the diet mm -hmm. and I we like say, okay, yeah. so the diet 
is causing the glucose elevated. That's causing the cholesterol to rise. Fine. That's kind Ooh. of, yep. we, we understand that. I know you're going. What are your beliefs behind your diet? Oh. Okay. So, so why is it okay to eat oats in the morning? Right? Why is it okay to have oats and berries and nuts and seeds and honey? Who told you that was okay? And what do you believe about that? And they say, mm-hmm. well, I believe it's okay because it's complex fiber and it's slow releasing and this and Okay. Realistically, that's not quite true, right? Because when we hear things like eggs are high in protein, well, as a composition percentage, they may well be, but eating one egg that gives you five grams of protein ain't going to make much difference to your protein intake for the life, right? Right, right, right. But that's how it is all marketed. It's all told like, oh, yeah, high in protein. Well, it might be higher than an apple, but it's not that high when you look at beef, say, or chicken or something like that. Mm. So we have these beliefs about our behaviors. So if my belief is um, French toast with maple syrup is fine for breakfast, and so long as I have a good lunch, which is a pastrami sandwich and a diet soda and, I don't know, oh. some, I don't know a, a, a low-fat donut, right? And then oh. in, in the evening, I'll have a, a, a protein bar and a something and a something, and a, I don't know, whatever it is, right? If your belief is that is okay, that is your behavior. Mm -hmm. So then you look at where did those beliefs come from? Okay, well, they came from this blog I read, or I watched Mike Morelli's video, and he said it was okay to do that. Or I'm on the Instagram. Oh, I did that video, yeah. You're talking about that video on French toast I did. Yeah, it's okay. (laughs) French toast will make you thin, that one. Lots of sugar in the morning is the way to go. Break your fast with tons of sugar. Just kidding. Yeah. But, but I'll tell you something, though, that's not that far from what was preached 10 years ago. Well, that's what I was going to say. So what if, yeah. Well, ahead. the theory was you woke up after being asleep and fasting, effectively, and therefore your blood glucose was low. And so having carbs in the morning wouldn't be yep. a problem. Exactly. But the truth of the matter is it's a big problem. Mm-hmm. Right. Let me ask you this. What if your belief, what if your belief system is the standard American diet? What if like, right, like what if you're not reading blogs? What if you're just trusting the government that basically is saying, hey, eat the standard American diet? What what about that belief system? Well, well, what's worse than that is you believe. And now we come to this thing about it's not your choice. Where are your beliefs coming from? Mm -hmm. Okay, so not only what what is your not only what is your belief, but where is that coming from? Yeah. And so this is everything, not just your diet. You know what I think? Say again. I, I, you know what? You know what I think? I think everybody should get their everybody should get their beliefs from this podcast. That's what I think. That's I what think I think. Should, Seriously, I as think we go, should. we're going on a we're going on a beautiful journey together, Paul. I'm super excited about this for the listeners. Like the stuff that you know, and and it's not just what you know; it's actually the experience that you have looking at blood work. You know, for thousands now of of people, men, women, different shapes, sizes, different ages, like you are, I mean, amazing in what you do. So when I say that, I don't take that. I'm not saying that lightly. I'm saying get your healthy beliefs, get your health beliefs from this show, from our podcast. And and yes, um, what I would say is at the very least, question your existing beliefs. That's yes. all. Fair. Right, because a, a belief is something that is there's no alternative and that's it right and and as soon as you start questioning well is that the right thing am i doing the right thing then you can at least explore what else might be available mm-hmm. so we talk about beliefs you know what's your belief around your diet and that then if you believe it's okay to have smoked salmon and scrambled eggs and avocado in the morning then that's your action your action then determines your outcome right mm-hmm. very simple if you believe fruity pebbles, I think is one of your ones out there, right? And, yeah, poor and orange juice and um, toast is a good breakfast. Uh-huh. That's going to be your action. You believe that, that's what you'll do, and that will give you the outcome, which will be likely, you know, blood glucose dysregulation, weight gain, liver issues, cholesterol, that kind of thing. Let me ask you this really quickly. Let me ask you this really quickly. So you, you mentioned fruity pebbles, and you know I, that, that was my breakfast growing up you know, and I I crushed it. How much does, so that's not my belief anymore, but how much am I fighting my childhood 
how much am I fighting the the habits that I built as a child um, because my parents had the wrong beliefs? Well, there you go, right? This is the next question, isn't it? Where did your beliefs come from? Right. Right. So not only, so we have to take it in steps, right? There was the cholesterol, there was the sugar, there was the diet. What's your belief behind the diet? And now it's, where did those beliefs come from? Yes. And they come from the second we're born, they come from our parents mm -hmm. and it's, it's unquestionable. Okay. Our parents are the definitive guide to what we believe initially. Mm -hmm. And then we go to kindergarten and then our friends start to influence us. And I've seen that in my little one, you know, she's nearly four now and she comes home and she'll be doing some action or saying something. Oh, where did you get that from? And she's like, oh, such and such did it. I'm like, oh, did they? Well, we'll deal with that, right? Because that's not, I'll give you the example that I'm thinking of. She comes home one day and she had something in a bowl. She had some soup or something in a bowl. And when she'd finished it, she picked the bowl up and started drinking from the bowl. Now, me and my wife, we, neither of us do that. So it's like, okay, well, where did you see that then? Because that's, you know, that's a habit that you picked up. Oh, uh, her friend at school does it. Okay, fine. Her friend at school had, does a few things, and clearly her parents are allowing things or doing things or saying things to that child, which she brings mm -hmm. to the kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. One of the things the child would, uh, my, my daughter came back one day and said, go away, I don't want to see your face. And I went, oh, really? Okay. Well, well, let's discuss that, shall we? Where did you hear that? So her friend at school said that to her. Mm -hmm. Where did her mm -hmm. friend at school get it from? Clearly, her, her, her parents at home, right. when right. they're fed up with her and annoyed, they go, get out of my face, you know, get out of my way, I don't want to see your face. Yep. And so she has brought that into the kindergarten and so on, right? And that's fine. I don't care how that, that family, how that those parents bring up their child. I have no issue with it whatsoever. I've got no judgment on them in any way, right. shape or form. Right. But I do object to my daughter being brought up that way or, or, or being influenced like that. And so when I see something like that, I will discuss it and nip it in the bud and go, no, we don't do that because I think we have a better way of doing things. And when you go back to school tomorrow, you can say, oh, do you know what? Instead of doing that, let's do it this way instead. Right? And then we can, we can nip that in the bud kind of thing. So we know that parents influence us massively. They influence our expectations, our behaviours, our beliefs. Then our friends at school, then, then the bigger school that we go to. And you think about when you went to, you know, middle school or high school and what that trauma was about and how the people yep. around you that you yep. hung out with and everything else. Then your work colleagues and then your partner and then your friends and, and, and. Okay. So these all influence us and we behave based on what we think is the right thing to do that will fit in with these other people's beliefs and behaviors. Socio socioeconomic, yeah, status. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then, 10, 12, 15 years ago, whenever it was, social media came out and oh all boy. bets were off, right? right? Because now I don't need to see proof of anything. All I need to hear is this person says this and I believe it. Right. Because prior to social media, anything you saw in the media was authoritative. In other words, we give it authority and say that must be true. Very if, true. You saw yep. it, if you saw it on Fox or you saw it on CNN or you read it in the newspaper, that must be true. Okay. <laughs> Fake news wasn't, I mean, I'm sure there was an amount of it prior, but now you've got anyone can put out anything they like and people are conditioned to believe that's the truth. Well, that leaves social media open to abuse and do anything they want to do. And they do, right? So we have children committing suicide based on their social media. We have people growing up with eating disorders and, and all sorts of problems at the age of eight or nine years old where they shouldn't even be aware that there's such a thing exists. Agreed. Now, you think at a very young age, they're being massively influenced by these outside um, manipulative um, influences that they can't possibly question it, right? They believe it. That's it. It's a belief. I mean, I need to have smaller ears. I need to have 
bigger muscles, I need to be a thinner waist. That's where it has to work, right? Otherwise, nothing's going to, you know, my life's going to be terrible. Right. Otherwise, I won't measure up. Exactly. And look at all these other people. They're all living these amazing lives. And mine sucks. Mm-hmm. So yep. your behavior. I want that car. I want that house. I want that lifestyle, right? Not even that. I want those likes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I want, yeah. I want, oh, yeah. I want that's, those friends. That's- that's the validation. That's the new. That's the new validation, right? It's not hearing. It's not hearing it anymore. It's it's getting the likes and the comments on social media, and so now the behaviors have you know the the behavior is is basically predicated on how many likes and how much engagement I'm going to get on social media if I post this message. Yep. Shall I tell you something interesting? If I put out something on social media that I think is really interesting and a bit cutting edge and important and, and valuable, I get tumbleweed, right? There's nothing happens. Same, yeah. I put up one yesterday, or it might have been this morning, my time, where it said like, if you, re- it's something like, if you replace uh, your morning coffee with green tea, you will, you will experience something like 89% less enjoyment in your life. Like basically drink your coffee or, you know, it's just a bit of a jokey thing, right? I didn't say it very well, but basically it got so many like, mm-hmm. yeah, I liked it or engagement or people commenting. And this. it was just so the most stupid thing, no value whatsoever. It was just like that, you know, death before decaf kind of thing. I'm yeah, not going yeah. down that road. And yet it got so much engagement. And yeah. my challenge, and we're going slightly off track here, but my problem is, how do we get the real information yes. into yes. people's heads so yes. that they actually take it on board? And the first yes. thing you must do is get them to question their existing beliefs. Stop focusing on the thin end of the wedge. What is the diet? How many eggs have I got to eat? And start looking at where did my beliefs come from? <clears throat> because that is what's making your choices for you. Yeah. Ultimately determining your habits. Habits determine lifestyle. Determine your behavior. And that gives yeah. you what the results are, right? So yeah. like you said about your parents, how do I how do I deal with that? And you go, well, we're all making it up as we go along. Right? Me, you, everyone else, we're making it up as we go along. There's no thing that says Mike Morelli at 40 years old, this is the, the list of things that you need to do this year in this order, and this is how you do them. Right? It's like you arrive at this time and you say, okay, based on my world, on my life, I think I'm doing the best I can in the way I think I can do it. Mm-hmm. And then you measure it against somebody else similar and you go, oh yeah, but they're doing this. Maybe I should be doing that. But what you forget to understand is that they are also making it up as they go along. Mm-hmm. And no one's got the book. No one says they're better, you're better, I'm better. We are all individual in our own, in our own right. Let's go back to your parents. I happen to know your mother very well. Yes, you do. You've changed your life. Yeah, yeah. When you're saying, that, how do I deal with that? You go, well, they were just making it up as well. Mm-hmm. And once you understand that they were doing the best that they thought they could do mm-hmm. with the information they had, key, then, you realize, here. Yep. then you realize it wasn't misdirection. It wasn't trying to misinform you. Yep, it wasn't a lack of love. It was just, that's what they... That's yes. what they were. That's- and, and I'm glad you touched on this too, because when I deal when I'm talking to my clients and, you know, we bring up past conditioning and trauma and, you know, belief system, our parents, they love us, right? And you're a parent, you know, I mean, if you're a parent, you know, you love your kids and you are doing the best you can do with the information that you have. And likely the information that you have is a set of beliefs from your parents, right? And they're same thing for them. They have a set of beliefs from their parents and if you go back you know 10 20 30 50 years 100 years right you look at information today versus information you know that long ago it's very it's drastically different yeah and and we believe it without question right because there are parents and they would do no harm exactly and there's a great story about that um uh, whether it's true or not doesn't matter it's a good illustration so this this woman's making a, a sunday roast and she's roasting her ham and she gets the ham and she cuts the end off and puts it in the in the baking tray, puts it in the oven. I remember this. It's so good. It, right? And and so her partner said, well, why'd you do that? Why'd you cut the end off? And they said, oh, my mum's always done it, always did it. And, yep. and she went, 
oh, okay, why did your mum do it? She said, oh, I don't know, let's ring her. So she rings the mum and she says, mum, why did you cut the ham, the end of the ham off? And she says, well, mum always did it, your grandmother. So, okay, well, why did she do it? I said, well, I don't know, let's ring her. So they ring the grandmother. Why yes. did you cut the end of the ham off? And he said, oh, because my baking tray was always too small. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it. Perfect example, perfect illustration. Perfect. But there's, it's like, well, but, but three generations down the line. Nobody asked why. Nobody asked why. Exactly. Right? So. Don't waste the ham. They believe it unconditionally. Mm -hmm. Whilst that might be a silly illustration, it's, it's a thing about why we don't question those things. Now, right. so let's take this as a concept, right? The, 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 you know, the title is It's Not Your Choice because it's been influenced by other things, other people, other circumstances. Be it social media, be it your parents, your colleagues, your friends, your workmates, whatever it is, right? We then have to start questioning our beliefs mm -hmm. and what are they doing for us? How are they serving us, right? What are our beliefs transitioning or translating into actions? What is it that it's mm -hmm. doing for us? And is it is it helping us or is it taking us in a way we don't want to go? And if it isn't where we want to be in life, if we yeah. haven't got the... The, the fulfillment and the happiness that we thought we would have by now. Yep. What, what is it about those beliefs that I need to question? So then you can yep. question it and change things. But one more thing before we move on, very important. Mm -hmm. The other massive, massive influencer is the huge conglomerate websites that are out there. So I'm going to take Amazon and there are other websites that you can choose, but I'm going to use mm -hmm. Amazon. Mm -hmm. If you look for something on Amazon, you will get emails saying, did you have a look at this? Well, how about that? Have you ever thought about this? Because that is related to this. You might oh, find yeah. it Masters. Yeah. And, and that will take you down a road of, of thought process to potential purchasing that you were never going down. Let yes. me give you a silly example. Mm -hmm. What did you buy, Paul? <laughs> What'd you buy, Paul? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's the example, right? It's, it's important. So th th this actually happened to somebody. It wasn't me, but it did happen to somebody. And I found it really interesting as to the power of that manipulation. So someone goes on to Amazon and um, is looking around on something and um, looks for like a, a fire extinguisher for the kitchen because they want to have, have one in place. Because it, I think what it was, they were renting a property, and part of it was that you had to have one. Mm -hmm. So they're like, okay, we'll buy one. So they get a cheap one, Amazon, just to, just to tick the box on the contract. Mm -hmm. And so a little bit later on, they start seeing these adverts for double glazing hammers. Right? These, are, these are special hammers that will break double glazing in the event of a fire, because mm -hmm. clearly you, you've done something towards fire. Let's pile on some other stuff right let's make sure you got everything in case your house burns down so so he's like not interested whatever delete 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 yep. but it continues yep. to happen and after a period of time he clicks on it and he's like oh what is that anyway and That's then he awesome. looks at it and then he's like looking at reviews and the reason and i'll, I'll tell you why i came to this uh, uh under this this uh, uh realization at the end but he's looking at the reviews and he's like oh it's like, saved my life. i got i got out of a of a burning house and i'd never have done it and, mm, oh, okay. shit. And yeah now he's thinking my family what am i going to do i've got to have this yeah. thing yep. So, yep the purchase is not the problem the problem is he's now someone that owns the hammer which means he's the philosophy of that person he now has anxiety over mm. what's going to happen I have this. You, you, what, you, you hit the nail on the head. Yeah. what else? What else do I now need to be anxious about when it comes to my family and their safety? What other thing? Oh, I better get some CCTV uh, cameras, and I better get yeah, yeah, you know, whatever it is. A slide that can escape right? escape route. You know, yeah, yeah right. Whole fear, 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 right? fear is a fear is a mother, right? It's the it drives consumer behavior. Yeah, and so the reason I bring that that whole story up is because. That person, it wasn't their choice to buy that hammer, right? And it's not their choice to—it's not their choice to think the thoughts that they're thinking now about their house and the fire that could potentially happen. 
exactly. So can you see where I was going yes, with? Yes, yes, yes. These things are not your are not your choice. Right, they're right. being manipulated to you, and they're taking you down a road, which is not your direction. It wasn't your choice to go down that road, but you're going down right. there, right? Regardless. So the answer. So the answer is to cut off all social media, all the internet, buy a teepee, and live by water. Well, that would that would be the answer of someone who's who's not educated. However, right, for someone who's educated, they turn around and say, the answer is be aware of what influences you. Yep. Although the TP thing, I think, is the ultimate goal because actually that sounds pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, who doesn't want to be land? unplugged? Yeah. Right, right. You know, right. it's like, because at the end of the day, right, it's like, we, I call it mental turbidity, right? We're attached to our screens, our phones, we're working, we're on social media, we're posting, we're communicating to people, ding, 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 right? Social media, text message, email, notification here, shit, right? It's like, oh, so. A TP yeah, in the middle of nowhere. As long as I've got food, water in my family, sounds really good right now. That, that actually is, um, you know, it makes perfect sense. Although in the real world, we do need to, you know, have a, have a halfway house where we can, we can use some of the, the modern things that we've done to our advantage rather than it destroying us. Yep. But I, I put a post up the other day. It basically said, if, if, civil, if humanity started today in this world, we'd probably last 10 years. Oh, before for sure. being, oh yeah. Before yeah. being extinct. Yeah. That's how much we've messed up our planet and our world and everything around it. There's no way you'd cope with all this massive influx of information and, and madness and, and keep your head about you. It would just wouldn't work. I, I got a thought for you because because this is a, a, a really powerful podcast. And, and I hope the people that are, are listening are, are taking notes. It's not your choice. right? That's what we're talking about. We're talking about your your life not being your choice. And, and the examples that you've given are, are beautiful. And it's like question your beliefs. What about those people who are so attached to their beliefs that their beliefs have become part of their identity and attached to their ego? And, and now like they're, they're, they've been doing it for so long. It's like, no, this is the right way. Because there are people like that. No, this is the right way. This is the right way. I know this is the right way. And they're so identified with them that they've become their beliefs that they won't make the changes. Are, are these people doomed? No, because you asked them the question, what's most important to you about your health? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And if you remember that from last week. I do, I do. For that, the people that are that, listening to this, go back and listen to that, that, that episode. That then, yeah. that then starts them questioning. Rattles their cage a little bit, right? What, goes, what becomes really important, and then you say, well, that's great. We can do that. The, mo the most important thing. Yep. But what you're doing at the moment is taking you further away from that. Sure. Or it's bringing you more of that problem. I like so it. we just need to adjust that belief a little bit. But you don't go yep. in there and go, no, you're wrong. You'll never, you just go, sure. yep. let's just tweak this a little bit. And instead of doing it this way, we can just change it that way. Now it's related, the new belief related to their most important thing. They will change their action and, and change their, uh, sorry, change their belief, which will change their actions, which will change their outcome. Mm -hmm. But a couple of things. So I just want to go back to that story about the, the hammer, uh, the safety hammer. The reason that came about was because I was talking to a patient and asked and trying to find out where all his anxiety was coming from. And, and then literally this is like, I never really experienced it five years ago. Nowadays, I'm like stressing about everything. You know, okay. Well, and, and then when you could illustrate to him that process and realize it wasn't his doing, he was being manipulated. It, it was like, we almost saw this weight lift off of his shoulders and the mm -hmm. change in his facial expression in that, oh, right, I know how to deal with this. But, you know, don't do this. Ignore those mm -hmm. things from that, yeah, and, and maybe not even shop on that site web. Right. Interesting to see that. This is another thing, another, another point I want to make very quickly. About five years ago, maybe more, I was in your house, maybe longer than five years now, and you were talk, just talking about um, how much we're addicted to our phones and things. And, and you were literally 24 7 on that thing and couldn't get your fit, right? And I brought you some blue block glasses. And I said, <laughs> Mike, just put yeah, you know, put them on at night at least. If you're going to stay on that damn phone, just put these on because it's going to make some benefit for you. And you got up the next morning and you'd had the best sleep you'd had in years yeah. because not only was not only is the content you were doing at the time very stimulatory and making you think a lot of things and 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 jacking you up, but that light that you were looking at constantly was really causing a problem. So we. 
we kind of put a barrier between it and it gave you a better night's sleep. The problem with that is it didn't change your beliefs about it. You might have just said, well, I can keep doing this behavior. I can just <clears throat> use something. I can biohack it. And that's the biggest problem that we are now seeing is people are trying to hack their way around the bad behaviors without changing the beliefs. They go, oh, just wear the blue block glasses or, you know, wear a, uh, a, a, a weighted vest when you do this. Or instead of doing yeah. that, then just do take take the glucose disposal. Yeah, or, just, or just go get the insulin or just go get the statins or just go get the pill or just go get the, right? Or just go get the, right? Or just go get the fat burner. And, and so that's why yeah, blue blocking glasses are great in a modern environment when there's a lot of light and so on and so forth. But better is to change that belief about phone switched off at 9.30, there's nothing there that can't wait till the morning. Right? It doesn't matter. And I deal with pretty much every time zone there is. But that phone's off at 9.30 and I'll go to bed by about half 10. And I don't even look at the phone at 9.30. It's normally just I'll turn it off. And the only reason I have it on to that time is if one of my children needs to contact me. But after that, they are, and the amount of times I wake up in the morning with texts from my kids, and uh, they, they don't go sending me that at half 11, 12 o'clock at night. I'm not going to respond to that. You know better than that, right? So, so it's cut off, it's done, and my belief is my sleep is much more important than what is ever going to be on there. That will wait till tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So people are so, like, reactive. I've got to do it now, I've got to do it now, I've got to put this out, do this, do that. And all you need is one uh, text that you engage with that is negative, like, oh, this thing happened and blah, 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 and there's a problem, completely screw your sleep. Because mm -hmm. you're going to think about it now. Oh, man, yeah, I've got to do that. No, no, no. That problem would have waited till the next day, and if you'd known nothing about it, it would have been no different, but you'd have got a decent night's sleep. And sleep is one of the most important things you can do for your health. Yes, yep. So... Where's your beliefs coming from? Where, what, what is that doing for your actions and your outcomes? Who gave you that influence? You know, what are these other areas that are influencing you? And once you've got understanding of that and control over it and question it, then you can start to actually bring into your life the things that you want permanently. Mm -hmm. you know, happiness, fulfillment, better, uh, better uh, relationship with your family and whatnot because you're doing things differently and you're not being manipulated and driven down a road and ending up somewhere that wasn't ever your choice in the first place. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I know my hope is as, as I'm listening to you and we're recording this podcast, my hope is that people check in with themselves at the end of this podcast, that people check in with themselves. They check in with their beliefs and they say, what do I want? What do I want for my health? What do I want for my health? What do I want for my relationships? Um, and what are my beliefs about those things? Because ultimately what we've said is that your health, your wealth, your lifestyle, your life, your circumstances, your relationships are all predicated on the beliefs that you have about those things. And so if you want a different result, then first look at your beliefs because it's your beliefs that are ultimately and have ultimately created the lifestyle that you lead today, all of it. Yeah, because your belief that fruity pebbles is okay means that you eat the fruity pebbles, right? So the belief leads to the action. The yep. action will then lead to the result or the outcome. If you want to change the action around the fruity pebbles, you can do it for a little while by thinking, oh, I don't want to eat that. It might be bad for me. Eventually, you're going to come back to it. Sounds like a diet, right? So, oh, yeah, I'm just going to cut that stuff out for now, get myself back. And then once I'm at that level, I'll maintain it. You're not maintaining it. This is why Weight Watchers doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Billion dollar company, though. Say again? Billion dollar company that doesn't work. How does that? Uh, it just blows me away. If it worked, everyone would be thin. Right, right, for sure. Right. So why are people still going back there all the time? Right. Right. And so really important. My osteopath, years ago, his receptionist, I remember this. So back then, you, it was there's no apps. They had a card. You wrote down this week's weight and next week and everything else. She'd been going for 20 years and put on a pound. Because if you look at her initial entry uh, uh, weight when she first started, and yeah, it dropped down, then went back up again, dropped down, went back up again. And every time she went back to Weight Watchers, dropped back down again, then went up. And the end result was basically zero. Yeah. Right? And so 
if it worked, they'd be out of business. Yeah. Right, right. True story. Yep. So we know that the belief behind the, the reason it doesn't work is they're not changing people's beliefs around what they're eating, why they are doing it, and what the consequences are to that. They're just right. saying, eat this food. You know, it's, it's healthy, and then you'll be fine. And these are your points, and that, and they go, okay. So whilst I'm following the system, I can lose the weight because it's a big calorie deficit and the weight comes off. As soon yep. as I'm left to my own devices, exactly. because Get up the system. were not changed, yep. because my underlying beliefs about what is okay and not okay, you can think it's changed by someone intellectually telling you, don't eat this, eat that. That's not a belief change. right? That is just, okay, I'm going to change my mind about what I do in the short term. But when you're stressed or when you're tired or when you're happy, you'll go back to the, the donuts. Right, right. Right. So let's deal with that belief. Yep. What's most important to you about your health? How does that affect it? Da, da, da. You know, there's this whole big thing that all knits together. But that's, um, you know, that's the important thing to understand is that without changing your understanding around your beliefs, your outcome is not going to change. Yeah. Yeah. I love that powerful, powerful message. And, you know, look, everybody wants the, the silver bullet. Everybody wants the diet or the training or the supplement that is going to take them to the promised land, make them look their best, feel their best. But the truth is, is that they have to strip away all of their beliefs first and really have a better understanding of where the beliefs come from, how are the beliefs serving them? Because some people have some really good beliefs. So we're not saying get rid of all of your beliefs. We're saying take, a, t take an account of all of your beliefs, assess all of your beliefs and say, well, gosh, this belief is doing this. This belief is doing this. This belief is attributed to this. And then start to shift things around and say, gosh, these beliefs are serving me. These beliefs are not serving me. Here are the beliefs that I need to swap out or change so that I can ultimately get the result that I'm looking for for my life. We get yeah. done, yeah. and and when you th if you if you think about it, our existence is all about today, right? Mm -hmm. Yesterday's been and gone. Tomorrow's not guaranteed. So we need to make the most of today, and and that's a big part of my life and the business that I run. And but to do that, you have to be able to deal with the health issues, but at the right in the right way. People are not looking at this stuff properly. They're going, all right, right. lose some weight, take a multivitamin, take turmeric, you'll be good. No, you won't be good because there's still going to be long-standing mold or toxicity or viral infection or Lyme or bacterial problems or whatever it is that you're not aware of that you've accumulated until those things are dealt with. This, this fancy shiny object thing here, the turmeric is not going to do you anything. So in my business, we deal with all of it from a comprehensive level at the same time as coaching the beliefs and the behaviors and the outcomes and the that. quick fix that everyone's after takes a year. That's it. Trust me. Did you guys hear that? The quick fix that you're looking for takes a year. I don't care what the last podcast you listened to told you. I don't care what the late night infomercial told you. I don't know. I don't care what your favorite fitness guru or influencer told you. These are facts because I have seen you absolutely change I mean, like from beliefs all the way through nutrition, I mean, like I've seen you dismantle in a good way people's lives and help them put them back together and thrive, live longer, help. I mean, like unbelievable stuff. At, at any age, by the way, right? You know, I, I've got patients who are in their 70s mm -hmm. who are still, you know, are still in the game going, oh, I need to improve this. I'm going to change this more. I've got, I want more happiness. And I have people telling me in their 70s, that they feel healthier than they've ever felt in their life. There's something wrong there because in your 20s and 30s, you should be thriving right, no matter right. what you're doing to your body, right? And so if you're right. getting them to these points or, or people in their 50s going, my life's just starting, I can't believe it, it's amazing. Yep. You know, functional medicine or looking after people and giving them a healthy, happy, fulfilling life is about, it's not about yeah. just do the diet, you'll be fine, do the journaling, that's what you need. Do the grounding. Some of that stuff's really useful in the right people, right. but not everybody. And the trouble is that stuff's being portrayed as everyone has to do it regardless. There's a lot of other things that people have got to do first. 
Right. That stuff's the icing on the cake stuff. That's the biohack. That's the glasses to prevent the blue light. That's not the belief change about why the phone's on in the first place. I love it. This was this was a powerful, powerful episode. I think we should end here because I know we could ramble and, and go on for a really long time. But for the listeners, guys, girls, if you're listening in or if you're watching on YouTube, first and foremost, thank you for the attention and the time. We hope that you were served and supported in this hour. I think it's it's really clear when we're talking about it's not your choice, right? It's not your choice. Your beliefs over time have not been your choice. So at the end now here, take some time to look inside challenge those beliefs. Where did you get them? Where did they come from? Challenge them, assess them, and start to shift those around so that you can get closer to what you want. Paul, thanks so much for being the most amazing co-host on the planet. We're going to be on Spotify. We're going to be on iTunes. This video will be on YouTube. Links will be below. You'll be able to get in touch with, uh, with Paul. Again, links are below. And if you will do us one big favor, share it, Drop us a review, give us feedback, constructive criticism, and then stay tuned for our next episode because this one's called Your Last Diet. Do you want to give them a little teaser before we jump into that episode next week? Your Last Diet. Before we talk about the, the last diet, what I want to also say to people is if you've got questions and anything related to life in general, send them in. I'd love to try and discuss them because over the weeks, I think they're going to be relevant. So, you know, feel yes. free to send. And send we'll pull out, and, we, and we'll pull out those questions and 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 talk about them on our on here. Yeah, and 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 it, teaser. It, it, may a come teaser. To a, it may come to a point whereby you know we might invite you on the show at the same time and discuss it with you in live. Oh, I right? love that. So the three of us can talk. But anyway, so the teaser about the the last diet. Your last is that, diet. Is there is there such a thing as your last diet? Yeah, yeah I'm sure people on uh, death row will believe that. But you, you know the the, the point I'm going to make is that it took me many decades to come to the conclusion that um, the way you need to construct your food for um, good weight maintenance, so fat loss, good cognitive function, longevity, energy, good sex drive, good um, sleep, good recovery, good training um, there is a way you can do it, which is far more simple than you believe or that you've been led to believe by these other people that have been manipulating your beliefs mm -hmm. um, and, um, and works every single time. And simple ideas tend to be the most effective. I have just one question and, we'll, and, and we're going to stop here. I got one question on this, your last diet. Can I have the yolks <laughs> you want to have yolks mike knock yourself out big man <laughs> i love you man i just had to add that guys girls like it share it and stay tuned for next week when we talk about your last diet i'm excited because i haven't talked to you about this one we haven't talked nutrition in quite some time so i'm really really excited so next week Get ready because we're going to talk about diet and I know everybody wants to know what's the best diet. We are out. Thanks again so much, Paul. I love you, brother.